Hey, what's up, everybody? Going to do a uh, classic rock reaction, man. This is Little Feet, a quad featuring Little Feet. And uh, we're going to start off with um, Little, or sorry, Spanish Moon, Dixie Chicken, Triple Face Boogie, and Rocket in My Pocket. And it's all live. Um, before I pop this off, I want to give a shout out to Jeff. Jeff says, um, Little Feet, this is the third quad from the album Waiting for Columbus, tracks 9 to 12. More info. Uh, in a review from All About Jazz, they sum up a lot of why this album is so popular and rightly agree with your sentiment that this is a band that should be heard live. The members of Little Feet found themselves in demand as session musicians, supporting many notable recordings. But as it turns out, the studio is not where the collective feet would shine. It would be on the stage. Dixie Chicken comes a force of nature. Live, this song is transformed into a frenetically molten expression of desire, uh, requite, and humor. It perfectly captures all that is Little Feet. And Sam Clayton's conga opening the Spanish moon immediately sets a drum and steamy mood for the rest of the song, as well as adding a tasty bit of percussion to Dixie Feet, or to Dixie Chicken. All right, so man, Good intro to Little Feet. If no one else has ever, uh, if no one has checked them out before, if you haven't seen uh, seen some of my Little Feet uh, reactions in the past, really, really good band, man. I always visualize them being kind of like on the same stage with the likes of Allman Brothers Band and the Grateful Dead doing a really, really nice, beautiful live outdoor festival concert. You know, that's where I see Little Feet. That's my vision of them. So let's hit this up, man. Spanish Moon. Little Feet, Spanish Moon, live. Let's get it. Organ sounds good.
That's a great, great jam. Yeah, no doubt they like that. Okay, man. So that's Spanish Moon. Live. Great, great jam. And like I said, man, I'm always uh, visualizing Little Feet being accompanied by the almonds and the dead in a really, really nice outdoor festival, you know? Uh, just having a really excellent time and uh, just doing, doing that thing, getting people all riled up and uh, really, really appreciating what they're hearing. Excellent. Let's uh, take a look at this great song, man, and see what it's all about, where it started from, how the inspiration came about, all of those really cool bits of information about uh, the song that I appreciate. Spanish Moon. Spanish Moon appears on Feats Don't Fail Me Now. It's the fourth studio album by American rock band Little Feet, released in 74 on the Warner Brothers label. The cover was designed by Neon Park. According to Richie Hayward, Wait Till the Shit Hits the Fan dates back to their debut, uh, but the band had trouble recording it on the previous two albums due to its irregular 7-8 meter. It was scrapped until the sessions for this album when it was recorded live in the studio as The Fan. The original version appeared on Hotcakes and Outtakes, 30 Years of Little Feet. In 2000, the album was voted number 718 in Colin Larkin's all-time top 1000 albums. Alright man, so more album information rather than song details. So let's just jump to our next track man, that being Dixie Chicken. Little Feet, Dixie Chicken Live. Let's get it.
they got it all going on. Every instrument. Except the harmonica. Yeah, um, Dixie Chicken 
ends abruptly because it segues immediately into another track. Now, Jeff had said to me, yeah, you know, I suggest that you just listen to all of them. Sorry, Jeff, that's not the format of my reactions. I do, especially in a quad, I do a song and then I do a review of that song. I don't go through the whole thing like I do an album reaction. So I uh, break it up because that's a part of my format, just so you understand that. So that's why I am not going through, let's and through all four and then at the very very end of that doing a whole shit ton of reading back to back to back to back it gets convoluted people don't appreciate what i'm reading and it's basically kind of like a wasted effort so that's why i'm doing a little bit in behind uh every song uh just so you know that's my format uh on my platform so dixie chicken dixie chicken appears on the album with the same name. It's the third studio album by American rock band Little Feet, released in 73. The artwork for the front cover was by illustrator Neon Park and is a reference to a line from the album's third track, the song Roll Em Easy. The album is considered their landmark album, with the title track as their signature song that helped further define the Little Feet sound. This was augmented by two additional members, guitarist Paul Barrier and percussionist Sam Clayton, added to make the more complete and familiar lineup that continued until their 79 breakup following the death of Lowell George. I've done uh, a tribute to Paul Barrier when he passed last year. Bassist Kenny Gradney was brought in to replace the original bassist Roy Estrada, who had left after the band's second album, Sailing. Or yeah, Sail and Shoes, sorry, to join Captain Beefheart's Magic Band. This new lineup radically altered the band's sound, leaning toward New Orleans R&B and funk. The album was voted number 563 in Colin Larkin's all-time top 1000 albums, third edition in 2000. All right, man, so that's just a little information on uh, more so the album that Dixie Feet is on. So. Our Dixie Chicken. I sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Dixie Feet. All right, man. So let's hit up our third track, that being Triple Face Boogie. Little Feet, Triple Face Boogie, live. Let's get it. very far away.
change directions now. part of the uh, organ sounds like it's something more from ELP than would be. There's the crowd. Sound a little far away. Well, obviously the uh, the audio audio feed for the crowd is uh, a little on the low side. Good tune, man. Good tune. It really switched up there a little bit, didn't it? Changed directions a little. It made me think that I was listening to a different band once the uh, extended instrumentals in the middle of the song was going. Good tune, though. Triple face boogie. All right. So, let's see what we can learn about this tune, man. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's just um, Sailing Shoes. It's off of Sailing Shoes. It's just uh, album info more so than song details. So, Triple Face Boogie appears on Sailing Shoes. It's the second studio album by American rock band Little Feet released in 72. Produced by Ted Templeman, it marked a shift away from the sound of the band's eponymous debut to that of their subsequent album, Dixie Chicken. It also introduced a cover artwork of Neon Park to the group, 
and was the last album appearance of original bassist Roy Estrada. Music and Recording Highlighted by a reworked group version of Willen, the album also featured such enduring tracks as A Political Blues, Easy to Slip, and the title track, all by guitarist and lead vocalist Lowell George. The second co um, the second co-written with Martin Kibbe, credited as Fred Martin, a former bandmate from the factory, and the first appearance of the George Martin credit on a Little Feet record. The track Texas Rose Cafe is a tribute to a post-Houston concert visit by Laurel George and others to the hippie restaurant club Beer Garden. During refreshments uh, upstairs, George had said that he liked the place so much that he was going to write a song about it and it would be on their next album. It turned out to be true and not just so much beer talk. It was the last full Little Feet record to be produced by an outsider until 77's Time Loves a Hero. <coughs> With each of the three interim albums being produced almost entirely by Laurel George. Noted LA-based session percussionist Milt Holland played percussion on Easy to Slip and Trouble, and he also played tabla on the follow-up album Dixie Chicken. What in the hell is a tabla? What's a tabla, man? Let me know what that is. Ron Elliott of the Bo Brummels played rhythm guitar on A Political Blues, and Debbie Lindsay provided the female vocals on Cold, Cold, Cold and the title track. The Bo Brummels. Do you guys remember the Flintstones, man? The Flintstones. <clears throat> they were having. I, I can't. I think it was uh, Shindig and um, and they actually introduced the Bo Brummels as themselves. I, I think that it was the Bro uh, Brummel Stones, and they had uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, laugh, laugh. You remember that episode of the Flintstones? Let me know if you remember what the hell I'm talking about. That was the shit, man. I remember that way back from when I was a kid. I always dig the Bro Brummels, Bro Brummels for that. Bo Brummels, damn. Reception. It was voted number 469 in the third edition of Colin Larkin, Larkin's all-time top 1,000 albums in 2000. In 2008, the album was released as gold CD by Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. All right, man. So let's hit up our final track, Rocket In My Pocket. That is some braggadocious shit, isn't it? Rocket In His Pocket. All right, Little Feet. Rocket In My Pocket, live. Let's get it.
in my pocket. Little feet. Good tune. That's a really, really good jam, man. And, uh, and it was only 3 minutes and 46 seconds. Yeah, that could have been much, much longer. You know, I was still trying to listen for <clears throat> Maybe I missed it. Why? So he says the music was hot, but my baby was not. Why? I, wasn't it her idea to go out in the first place? So they get all spiff, spiffed up. They go out. He's feeling it, the groove, the jam, all's good. And she's not feeling it. Why? You know, I didn't catch that part. Maybe you can fill it in for me. Maybe I wasn't listening well enough. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that, there was a question mark in my mind there that wasn't answered. <laughs> anyway, good jam, man. Good groove. Uh, okay. So yeah, same thing here. Album information. And there's a big ass review of the album by All Music. Okay. So Rocket in My Pocket appears on Time Loves a Hero. It's the sixth studio album by American rock band Little Feet, released in 77. And uh, all music reviewer Stephen Thomas Earlwine says, quote, When Little Feet headed into the studio to record Time Loves a Hero, tensions be between the band members, more specifically Lowell George and the rest of the band, were at a peak. George had not only succumbed... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, man. George had not only succumbed to various addictions, but he was growing restless with the group's fondness for extending their jams into territory, strikingly reminiscent of jazz fusion. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, staying on the train or on the line of um, the classic rock jams and maybe fusing it into maybe some funky grooves is one thing, but then going off into a jazz uh, fusion, that's something else entirely. The only person that comes to mind that seems to pull that off seamlessly is Santana. The rest of the group brought in Ted Templeman, who previously worked on their debut and produced Sailing Shoes to mediate the sessions. Oh, Santana and Steely Dan. Sorry, excuse me. I bet you there's a Steely Dan fan screaming at me. I bet. George wasn't thrilled with that, but that's probably not the only reason why his presence isn't large on, these release, on this release. All signs point to his frustration with the band, and he wasn't in great health. <clears throat> so he just didn't contribute to the record. He wrote one song, the pleasant but comparatively faceless Rocket in My Pocket, and collaborated with Paul Barrier on Keeping Up with the Joneses. Barrier was responsible for the only bright moment on the album, the in great, the in great, damn, the ingratiatingly Silly old folks boogie. <clears throat> and along with Bill Payne and Ken Gregney, the funk the funky sing-along title track. Elsewhere, Barrier and Payne came up dry, turning out generic pieces that are well played but not as memorable as comparable as comparable Boogie Brothers cuts from the same time. Sorry, all my reading is to shits today as memorable and comparable as the Doobie Brothers cuts from the same time. There we go. Then there's Day at the Dog Races, a lengthy fusion jam that Templeman and everyone in the band loved, except for George, who, according to Bud Scalpa's liner notes in Hot Cakes and Outtakes, disparagingly compared it to Weather Report. He was right. No matter how well feet play on this track, it comes across a self-serving indulgence, and the clearest sign on this muddled album that they had indeed lost the plot. Wow. Stephen Thomas Erlewine. Uh, all music. Yeah, so that, I guess, obviously was marking the decline and the beginning of the end for Little Feet. Or did it start before that? Did it start when uh, George lost himself in uh, addictions and his health started to decline? When did they really start to lose it, Little Feet? Was it when they uh, started to more overlap into the uh, jazz rock fusion? Whereabouts did they really start to lose it? Let me know about that. I have a feeling, Jeff, you know. So that concludes our look at these really, really great songs, man. And just like I said, you know, uh, you can tell when a band 
is at their best performing live. And yes, even though I started off listening to Little Feet、uh, from their studio stuff, I knew all along because I was just visualizing how much I would enjoy them watching them live. And then, of course, my mind was putting them right shoulder to shoulder with the Doobies and um, uh, and the Grateful Dead. Not the Doobies, I'm sorry.、Um, with the Almonds and the Grateful Dead and、uh, seeing them in a nice live outdoor kind of、um, uh, concert venue. So that really.、Um, Gave me the impression of how great Little Feet could be live. And it just goes to show I'm right. You know, they sound fantastic. They're clear. They're having fun. They're jamming, you know.、Um, missing video footage, but of course, you know, most of the time we're not going to find decent video footage with decent audio. So, you know, you basically be thankful for what you get. But they sound really, really good live. Some acts have no business performing live. They are the shit, some of them. Live, you know, but yeah, man, there are some that just shine so bright being、uh, performing live, and、um, Little Feet, they're one of them, man. All right, so that concludes my quad. Jeff, thank you very much for this.、Uh, I'll always have time and room to do some Little Feet, man. They're one of those bands that I've been saying that I really want to get to know a little bit more. So thanks for、uh, keeping the little train、uh, of reactions going for me. So,、uh, yeah, I'm just lo- looking at my notes here. Now,、uh, I got a reaction. I believe it's an album reaction for Jeffrey.、Uh, I got a shit ton of Jeffreys, man, between my two platforms. This is Jeffrey Starlin.、Um, and I can't remember what the album is. It's probably a. Mm. It's talk, speaking of the Grateful Dead, I bet you it's a Grateful Dead album. So, Jeffrey, Don, Quincy, Charles, David Akachita got reactions、uh, coming up. I should knock all of these out before the end of the week. And then we get into the weekend and、uh, we hit up some Led Zeppelin. I think what I'll do, my next Led Zeppelin reaction will more than likely be the full album of Presents. I want to do,、uh, do a little reconnecting. With、um, the album Presence and then In Through the Outdoor. Those two albums basically, I just kind of, well, I didn't fly through them, but you know, from one song to the other, it's a, a disconnecting factor there. And so I know that、um, it was intended for you to do a whole album listen, you know, from beginning to end. So I'll do that just to kind of reconnect myself to these、uh, two albums. There are four albums in total from the Led Zeppelin lineup. That I didn't really feel very connected to. The songs, yes, the whole album, not so much. So that's why I'm going back and doing this. Just so you know, a lot of you are probably saying, well, first off, you do too much Led Zeppelin. And secondly, why the hell do you have to do,、uh, do it over again? You know, and、uh, you know, that's why, just so you know. And by the way, those of you who are saying that to me, you know, you do have a choice. You know, you don't have to.、Um, Check out my reactions. You know, you don't have to say shit, right? And you know that you can go somewhere else. You know that, right? Just so you know. All right. That's how I roll, man. Stop messing with me and my channel. All right. So, Jeff, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate、um, the knowledge and the information here、uh, about Little Feet. And I appreciated reading this little piece from、uh, All Music. And sadly, yes, you know,、uh, I guess everyone has a decline. Every great band has a decline, and Little Feet's no exception. So,、uh, but yeah, I, I want to do a little bit more background on this when the decline actually started. I'm not sure if this was actually the time of this album. So, we'll do a little bit more、uh, digging as time goes by with more reactions. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care, and I'll see you in my next reaction. Peace.